Automatic Bar Machine Operator Training Program. Lesson number 13, Tapping. The process of cutting threads into the inside diameters of stock is called tapping. The attachment pictured here is used for the tapping operations on the New Britain Automatic Bar Machine. This tape will show you the correct procedure for mounting and adjusting a tapping attachment. Most tapping and threading operations performed on the automatic bar machine use the universal threading attachment. This attachment consists of several different components. This is the threading spindle. It will run at two different speeds during the tapping operation. This is the tap. It is mounted in the floating tap holder and locked into place with an Allen screw. This assembly, in turn, is mounted into the spindle. The spindle provides the rotation to the tap that causes the tap to enter and exit the part. These two sets of nuts and this spring must be on this push bar. The push bar causes the attachment to move on the tool slide. Before you learn how to mount and set up the attachment, it is important that you understand how the tapping operation works. For right hand threads, the tap is turning slower than the work spindle as it approaches the part. The difference in speed causes the tap to cut the threads into the part. Once the proper tapping depth is reached, the tap changes to a speed that is faster than the work spindle. This causes the tap to unthread itself from the part. Both the tap and the part always rotate in the same direction. It is only the difference in speeds that causes the tap to enter and exit the part. For left-hand threads, the opposite would occur. The tap starts out faster to cut the threads, then slows to unthread itself. The threading switch selects the proper speed changes by placing it in either the right or left hand position. The spring on the push bar cushions the action of a cam on the auxiliary cam drum. The spring should compress slightly as the tap first touches the workpiece. The pressure causes the tap to start cutting. The spring should have little or no pressure on it once the tap begins to go into the piece. The setup begins by mounting the proper cam on the auxiliary cam drum. The same procedure that is in Lesson 12 is used to mount the cam. Check to see that all the dirt and sludge is removed from the tool slide before mounting the attachment. Turn the threading switch to select the proper threading. Next you can insert the drive shaft into the quill in the power case wall. The push rod is assembled to the auxiliary bracket, then the floating tap holder is inserted into the threading spindle and locked into place. The tap is inserted into the tap holder and locked into position. With the universal threading attachment mounted, you are ready to set up the attachment. Slide the tap all the way back from the workpiece. Now, hand crank the machine to the start of the feed on the auxiliary cam. Slide the tap and holder forward to touch the workpiece. Adjust the jab nuts on the push rod until the spring is slightly compressed against the auxiliary bracket. The other set of nuts are tightened against the other side of the auxiliary bracket. This trip switch on the auxiliary cam drum will cause the threading spindle to change speeds. This cam causes the switch to trip. Mount the cam close to the switch roller at first. Then the cam can be slid back until the proper tapping depth is reached. 
Make fine adjustments if necessary by moving the adjustable arm on the switch. This completes your television training tape on the universal threading attachment used for tapping. You may watch this tape as many times as you need to fully understand the material. Return to the operator booklet when you have finished for your next step.